Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, I've gotten a lot of comments lately that I've been focusing an awful lot on Washington State stuff, and I will remind everyone that we are Washington Gun Law first and foremost, and i got to take care of the hometown crowd. But occasionally, I definitely like to reach out and do some videos about states other than Washington State. And, you know, one of the things my dad always told me is, is that, son, anytime you think you have it really bad, you don't usually have to look too far to find someone who's got it far worse than you. And right now, as we're going through this a bloodbath of a legislative session here in Washington State, I really don't have to look too far to find a state that actually has it way worse than us here in Washington. And, of course, that state is California. But maybe things are going to change a little bit, or at least somebody's going to get a wake-up call, I believe. So today, California, let's spend a few minutes and talk about the shock and awe coming California's way real soon. Okay, before we get going down the road we're going down, I want to say that this video is done for my good buddy down in California. You know who you are, Philip P. Now, Philip P. is probably the first Californian to subscribe to Washington Gun Law. I think he subscribed to us when we had about 1,500 subscribers, okay? And he has been with us through thick and thin. He has been spreading the word about Washington Gun Law down in California. Philip P., thank you for all your support for our channel. This video is for you. Why do I talk about the state of California? Well, a couple things. Uh, number one, uh, I think you got a beautiful state and it's run like hell. And number two, for those of you who know about our governor here in Washington State, Jay Inslee, all he really does is try to emulate Governor Newsom. He is a Gavin Newsom wannabe. The only difference is, is that Jay Inslee's not particularly smart and he does not look like a Ken doll. But for those of you still trying to enjoy some semblance of your Second Amendment rights in California, you should know by now that there's not one, not two, but five cases all at a head. The briefs are in, the response are done, all the exhibits are entered, everything. We are literally waiting for rulings. There are five cases in two separate districts, and there are big issues. Now, a couple of them we know about nationally, but for California, there is a lot at stake. And who, candidly, I think that your governor and attorney general are going to get carpet bombed here in the next few weeks, okay? Because things are really, really stacked up. Now, what am I talking about? Okay, there are five cases that you need to be aware of that we can get rulings on at any moment. There is Duncan v. Bonta. Now, that's big to us here in Washington State because it deals with California's magazine ban. So any state that's dealing with a magazine ban, Oregon, I know you're fighting this through Oregon Ballot Measure 114. That is a ruling we expect at any moment. That's going to be a big day for the Second Amendment, a bad day for Governor Newsom, a bad day for Rob Bonta. Okay, then there, of course, is Miller v. Bonta, another huge case that everyone's kind of waiting on. That deals with California's assault weapon ban. Obviously, us here in Washington State are very, very interested in that since our legislature is rapidly working on one of those, and we do lie within the 9th District as well. Now, in addition to that, there's Road v. Bonta. Now, that deals with a challenge to, I did not know this, but apparently California makes you do a background check before you buy a box of ammo, so it's a challenge to that. There is a case called Fouts v. Bonta, which deals with a challenge to some laws that deal with billy clubs and other devices similar to that in California. And then there are two other cases, the names of Rena and Bolin, and that deals with, it, it, it looks like it deals with California's handgun roster. If you dig into the pleadings a little bit more, but it really deals with this is some requirements on, I believe it's a, uh, the magazine detachment, micro stamping, and then there also might be a, like a requirement California law for a loaded chamber requirement. I don't think that any of those are bad ideas, but to mandate them by law, that's a whole different thing. I think everyone should have the right to pick whichever firearm they feel that is best suited for them. So, you have all of these issues, all of these bills, all of these laws that Newsom has put a lot of political clout in, that Rob Bonta has put a lot of political clout in, and that state of California has spent a lot of money so far defending. And they're going to be spending a lot more of your money after these rulings come out. Do we anticipate a clean sweep? Probably not a clean sweep. However, on the big issues, on the big issues here, and that, of course, being Duncan v. Bonta, the mag ban, Miller v. Bonta, the assault weapon ban, and Road v. Bonta, the background checks on ammo, when you take a look now at how the Ninth Circuit is going to be boxed in here by the Bruin opinion, okay, 
it's going to get real interesting real fast because you know Gavin Newsom and Rob Bonta is going to peel this as fast as humanly possible. But then they're going to get to the Ninth Circuit, and that's where the rubber is going to meet the road. The Ninth Circuit is going to want to uphold all of these laws. And if they have the old two-part balancing test, well, that's the great escape hatch, you see. But that escape hatch now has been welded shut by Justice Thomas in the Bruin opinion. So they are stuck with the rather clear case law that unless there is a historical analog that supports this, it is per se unconstitutional. And for the magazine and the assault weapon ban, the test is even more simple than that. We're just getting now into the common use test, a test announced in the Heller opinion that basically says the only historical analog that there exists is regulation of firearms, which are both dangerous and unusual. And unusual, not or unusual. I can guarantee you the state of California is going to make the argument that it's dangerous or unusual. We see it with the state of Illinois. We see it with the state of New York. So California is going to follow that playbook. But the true test is dangerous and unusual. When you're talking about some of the most commonly sold firearms on the planet and the magazines associated they, therewith, there is nothing unusual about that. So yes, California and Philip P., while I don't think you're going to end up with a big old Freedom Week like you did last time, I do think that the sun is about to rise, and I do think that your governor and attorney general are going to crap themselves pretty soon. Listen, you may have more questions about what's going on in California or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. You guys should know how to get a hold of Washington gun law by now, but if you don't, hey, all of that's in the description box down below. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here on this channel, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.